There is at the moment a ceasefire in Syria, one that residents believe is nothing more than a trick and the bombs will start falling again at any moment. In Libya, French special forces are on the ground fighting Islamic killers amidst the imminent collapse of the entire country. There is a thinking that we, the United States, can still fix Libya. And at least one presidential candidate stands that it's not our problem. Others still need to step up. Reality is always the toughest part of such issues, so let us get to it. Our guest is former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Shilman Senior Fellow at the Investigative Project on Terrorism, author of Architects of Disaster. Welcome Pete Hoekstra back to the hard line. Pete, good to see you again. Let's get right to this because I got to tell you, when I saw this headline, and this is in Politico, from Ben Fishman, who is one of President Obama's former Libya advisors, he says, contrary to what people think, we were neither naive nor ill-prepared when we intervened. And he talks about how we can still fix Libya. You agree with all that? We fixed Libya, Ed. We fixed Libya in 2004. Gaddafi gave up his nuclear weapons program. He paid reparations to the victims of his terrorist activities in the past, and he allied himself with us to kill radical jihadists. In 2011, when this administration overthrew Gaddafi, they snatched defeat out of the jaws of victory. I don't know if they were naive or not, but they sure were stupid. Then how do we look at something like this? And here's somebody who apparently was on in the inside who says, wait a minute, we can still fix it. And I hear people like Bernie Sanders, as a matter of fact, and I wanted to check this. He says, basically, when it comes to a lot of this discussion here, it's judgment, not experience that we need when it comes to dealing with places like Syria and Libya. All right, Pete, let, let's put this all together then. Was our judgment bad? Was our experience bad? I mean, who's, who's stupid here? Well, I mean, the uh, number one, we had the experience. We overthrew a bad guy in Iraq with disastrous results. Uh, we should have known that. And then we threw, overthrew an ally in Egypt, and we had bad results. And then we still decided to overthrow an other ally in Libya. And somewhere along the line, through experience, someone expected that we would have a different outcome, and we didn't. We have another disaster. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, in this case, experience clearly did not inform the future. Uh, and so it's, you know, it's poor judgment. Then, okay, I'm, I'm going to throw a radical idea up here for just a moment. Disaster, disaster, disaster. You and I have spoken many times about it. And every time we do, there comes that thinking process that we just weren't smart enough to avoid disasters. What about those like Sanders, like others who say, all right, wash your hands, walk away. It's all yours, guys. You take care of it because we can't be sitting here fixing this thing every four or five years. Well, remember, we, like I said, we did fix Libya at one time. We did fix Egypt at one time. Uh, Syria wasn't an issue until we intervened. Iraq wasn't a problem until we intervened. And so, you know, in many cases, uh, we, you know, we fostered this upon ourselves. And it's not saying take care of it yourself. The bottom line here is this administration believed that they could deal with radical jihadists, and they can't. Radical jihadists will not change their behavior just because we are nicer to them and because we have a new president in the White House. Their ultimate goal and objective is to destroy civilization as we know it, and until they achieve that objective, they will not stop. This president, this secretary of state thought that ah, these are okay people, and if we just change our behavior, they will change theirs. Pete, let's just say it out loud here, and maybe it's not being said enough. The President of the United States, the Secretary of State, and so many other people in this administration, incredible hubris, incredible ego. If you want to talk about rebuilding something, start by the fact by saying that the people who are in charge really just had the ego to say they could puff out our chest and get it done in a second's notice just like that. that you want to talk about stupidity, that's the stupidity right there, yes? Uh, it really is. It, it is hubris. Uh, this president said before he got elected that the world will see America differently, especially the Muslim world, uh, because, you know, I lived in a Muslim country. That says everybody who came before him, everybody in government, everybody in the State Department, in Congress, you guys are all naive. America's going to, the world's going to look at America differently because guess what? I'm president and you're not anymore. And it, uh, it was hubris. People and organizations and countries, they operate in their national self-interest. They're not going to change just because the opposition has a new leader. Pete, about 30 seconds left. Delta Force is now moving in. Apparently, they're ready to 
target, capture, or kill top ISIS operatives. They've been getting ready for several weeks of covert preparation. Do you have confidence that they will be able to get something done? Oh, they'll be able to get something done. They'll be able to go out and, you know, kill some folks. They won't capture anybody because we can't interrogate them. And if we capture them, we'd have to give them over to the Libyans or over to somebody else. Uh, you know, no, we won't capture them. But, yeah, we'll be able to kill some folks. But will we able to change the dynamics in Libya and in northern Africa? Not in the short term. Every time I see things like last several weeks preparing, I think that should say last several years preparing properly, and we might be able to get something done. Pete Hoekstra, always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk right, again thank you. soon. Now, what is it Warren Buffett knows about the American economy that no one else knows? Because Warren Buffett has made a statement that has some people talking this weekend about where we are heading economically. Stay with us. The fastest 60 minutes of news, the hard line continues.